the shadow of the conquering German armies covered Western Europe. The self-styled master race was riding high. Adolf Hitler stood just as Napoleon had stood more than a hundred years before and looked across the English Channel to the one fighting obstacle that stood between him and world domination. The chalk cliffs of Britain rose sheer and white out of the choppy waters. And beyond, a little island, smaller than the state of Wyoming. Crush that little island and its stubborn people and the way was open for world conquest. The fall of Austria, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Denmark, Norway, Holland, Belgium, France had given him more than 100 million slaves to work for him or starve. The preliminaries were over. It was time for the main event, the Battle of Britain. Hitler and his generals feverishly drafted their plans for the conquest of Britain. Every detail must be anticipated. A slip now might wreck the whole timetable of world conquest. Six weeks of final preparation went into those plans. Six weeks to determine the history of a thousand years. The thing was foolproof. See for yourselves how simple the whole operation was to be. Look. German plan for invasion of England. Phase one. Knock out the Royal Air Force and its bases. Get control of the air and the sea lanes across the channel. Follow the Blitz plan that had wiped out Poland, the Low Countries, and France. Destroy communication and transport lines. Above all, get command of the air. Phase two, pulverize the coastline with dive bombers. Drop parachute troops to take over the airfields and establish beachheads. Phase three, actual invasion. Pour the German panzer divisions across in high speed barges under an umbrella protecting fighter planes. Then send spearheads of armed might to divide, surround, destroy all opposition. That's all there was to it. Conquer Britain. Force the surrender of the British fleet. Then, with the combined sea power of Germany, Britain, Italy, France, and Japan, he could control the seas and tell us where to head in. The torch of freedom flickered low. On the Channel Invasion coasts, more than a hundred fully equipped German divisions were singing the Nazi theme song, We Are Sailing Against England, as they waited the word from Hitler. Here, for weeks, all the supplies and weapons of the Nazi war machine had been turned toward Britain. of the Nazi whale were set to swallow Jonah. And what about Jonah? How was he doing? Well, gun. 
motorized equipment, all abandoned to save the one priceless item, men. In all of Britain, there was not enough equipment for one modern division. Only one tank for every thousand square miles of territory. Only one machine gun for every 1,500 yards of beach. Britain had a navy, too, but it was scattered all over the globe, guarding vital food and supply lines. And the British knew it would be suicide to use their fleet in the narrow waters of the English Channel with the German Air Force in control of the air. Britain also had an air force. An air force outnumbered 10 to 1 by the enemy, both in men and machines. And then there was Britain herself, the people of Britain, the people who were to be terrorized and forced to surrender. They knew that every man, woman, and child, in uniform or out, would be Hitler's target in the onslaught that might come at any moment. They knew they had a job to do, and not much time to do it in. The young, the not so young, and the old. The clerk, the butcher, the farmer, the member of parliament, they formed the civilian army, Britain's home guard. They started from scratch. Experience, equipment, supplies, all were scarce. Only one shell to fire at each practice. The women of Britain refused to be left out. We'll enlist too. We'll put up the barrage balloons. Man the ACAC guns. We'll run the railroads and get the trains through on time. Ferry the planes. Carry the dispatches. Drive the ambulances and run the buses. And we'll see that our men are fed and don't go hungry. Others work. Men and women alike. They worked full time, overtime, double time, 40 hours a week, 50, 60, 70. Hours meant nothing. Fatigue meant nothing. until the government forced them to cut down hours because over-fatigue was hurting production. And when they weren't working, the men patrolled the moors for parachutists, blocked the roads, rehearsed invasion defenses, Something had happened here the Germans could never understand. In a democracy, it is not the government that makes war. It is the people. To lead them, the people had chosen Winston Churchill as their prime minister. And he spoke the words in every British heart when he said, we shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on beaches, landing grounds, in fields, in streets, and on the hills. We shall never surrender. This was Britain in its darkest hour. The people knew they were in for the worst the Nazi mind could invent, yet they didn't panic or run away. They patrolled and waited. They drilled and waited. They worked and waited. Waited for the terror they knew was coming. Then it came. That's the sound. 
sound that became part of the life of every man, woman, and child. And the... August 8th, 1940, and the battle for Britain is on. 30 enemy aircraft over the channel, flying due west. In dozens of flights, hundreds of planes, bombers, fighters, dive bombers, across that 21 miles of channel, that eight short minutes of water. Their first tactics were to bomb convoys in the channel, convoys loaded with food and munitions bound for the great port of London. Fighters waited overhead for the defending planes of the Royal Air Force, the RAF, to appear. They didn't have long to wait. Odds of six, eight, ten to one, and dove in, shouting the old hunting cry, Tally Ho! the Nazi plan called for the RAF to be knocked out of the air. But the men of the RAF hadn't read the Nazi plan. 